Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, replenish the earth, doing what God told them to do, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, now these are not, I don't know what they, who cares what they say, children of Seth and all, these are the angels. At the end of uh, Luke chapter 3, Adam is called the son of God. People who are born again Christians by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of God, become children of God. These are the angels. The angels saw man. And we read uh, the other night when we talked about the woman's hair because of the angels. And whatever they, whoever the, the Bible people say they are, they're wrong. Because if they were another class of people, Seth, whoever, they'd be the sons of Adam, not God. And plus, we read that in chapter 4, verse 28, up to Seth and unto Enos began men to call on the name of the Lord. So there's a whole line of people who are not of God, who are against God. So they're angels, plain and simple. Job 1, 6, 2, 1. 38 4, Psalms 82 1 6, 2 Peter 2 4 and 5, and Jude 6. They're angels. They're fallen angels. I mean, just because they don't want to believe that angels can conduct sexual activities with the women, Jesus told the Pharisees, You should be as the angels. You know, neither male or female. You're not given to marriage. But that doesn't say that they can't come down and do what they do. But they can believe the Roman and the, and the mythologies and the religions of the Greeks. But they can't believe God. They can't believe that there are fallen angels that would do such a thing. And one of the things that, that Satan will use for mankind is sex. So the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. So there is a marriage. But Jesus said the angels never given the marriage. That's in glory. They come down. And notice it says here. Okay. Now maybe America would change this. But when daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men. And they were fair and they took them wives of which of all which they chose. Angels are not females. And you can't get a sodomite angel woman to meet to mate with a woman and make children. That's impossible. Because as in Lord uh, chose the wives, the Bible says wives. Opposite of a wife would be a husband, a man. The sons of God, angels, men. And they didn't see him with wings. They didn't see him anything but as men. Throughout the Bible. And the Lord said, My spirit, the Holy Spirit, shall not always strive with man. For that he is also is flesh. It's what we are, we're flesh. I don't know what the also means. He also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And look at chapter five. Look how many years they were living. Maybe when the angels come fall, they get flesh. It could be of that kind of flesh. 
So man, because of this relationship with the angel, he loses his lifespan greatly. We got a man who lived 770 years. So 120 years, that's still a lot of years. And look where we are today. We were at a point in America, you had 50 years old, you would live. Now, 60, 70, 80, but you end up paying medical bills for the rest of your life. There were giants in the earth in those days, and we'll read about them in the Bible. And also after that, after what? What's the next great event coming in the Bible? The flood. So there were giants on this earth before the flood. And there were giants in the earth after the flood. David dealt with them. When the sons of God, and this is what they'll throw the note, you know, the, the children of Seth, whatever garbage. When the sons of God, the angels came in unto the daughters of men. Daughters. Males. Coming into the women. And they bear children to them. The daughters bear the children unto the male angels. No shallow doubt that angels are males. If they were females and, and mating with the with the women of the of the earth, there would be no children. Because there are plenty of women and women today together, and they do get married, but they do not produce giants. So it looks like the, the mingling of the angels and the, and the daughters of man produces a giant. They bear children to them, and the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And this is where you find your Roman and Greek gods. They were the gods who would come down and mate with, with the humans, and the humans would go mate with the gods, and the gods mate with the gods, blah, 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 blah. It's stolen out of the Bible. And you'll have great men like Goliath that mentions. He's a great man that's mentioned in the Bible. The Bible says he's a champion. He's the only champion in the Bible. And then he had brothers. And he has such a sex problem that, that he's got brothers that are also his children by his mother. There's a man that had a huge bed stay mentioned in the Bible. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. God saw it. Be not deceived, God's not mine. He sees. That's not the verse I'm going to quote. But the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. God sees it. That's the one I wanted to quote. And there that every imagination. There's the problem. Man thinking he's not controlling his thoughts. He gets into trouble and he angers God with what he's thinking. And we're going to see this after the flood. Imagination of the thoughts of his heart. Man, comes not from the brain, comes from the heart. You cannot deal with a human being and think you're going to heal them. When you go to a doctor and he tries to work on your head. Man's got it wrong. The imagination and thoughts of man doesn't come from your head. It comes from your heart. And Jeremiah and Jesus tells us that that heart is wicked. You don't go see a shrink. You go see a, a pastor of the Bible for guidance when you've got troubles and problems. And you go to God and repenting and getting raped. And here's repentant, and it repented the Lord. Now, you would never think that the Lord would have to repent. Repent is when you come to acknowledge that you've done wrong. And you turn from your wrong. And that's what God, God, God's looking at man like, I am sorry that I made you. I'm backing away from you. I'm turning my back. If that's what the 
If that is what repentance is, if that's what somebody on the street and I witness to them say, listen, you've got to be sorry for the sin that you are in. You have got to tell God that you do not want to do it. You are tired of it. And there's only one thing that Jesus can do is to save you of your sins. You need to repent now of those sins and get away from those sins and avoid those sins and say no to those sins. And when you do sin, you're to plead 1 John 1, 9, and God says, I have that attitude towards man. And you're going to see that after the flood, too, even after the judgment. And you're going to see, listen, in the eyes of God, man is wicked. That's all mankind. Because he thinks wrong. And when he fills his, his head with knowledge of degrees and all that, he ain't doing right. And he repented the Lord that he, God, had made men on the earth. Well, look at that. This is the mankind that God said, I for so loved the world, I gave my only begotten son. And God, he hates to sin. And what's it say? It doesn't say he loves the sinner. He says, I'm backing off of you. I am grieving that I did make you. And I've got to pass pretty soon, next chapter, I've got to pass judgment upon you because you're just too wicked. Anybody who says that God loves this, God hates the sin and loves the sinner has not read their Bible. We're only six chapters into the Bible and God is angry at man, not the sin. He didn't say, I it, it repent to the Lord that he gave man imagination and the thoughts of his heart. No, he has repented that he has made man on the earth. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created, not evolution, not ape, from the face of the earth. It's going to be a worldwide, global judgment. And look at that, both man and beast. What did the animals do? I just think of a kind of sexual perversion with the beast. David dealt with that. But creepy thing? What did bugs and caterpillars and worms have to do with it? And fowls of the air. Now remember, up to now, there, everything is vegetarian. It is not like lions are going out and killing man. It is not like man is taking a chicken and eating it raw. What is it that these animals are suffering because of man? Man's sin, whatever it is here, has so angered God that man is doing something to these animals that God said, I could get rid of them too. And animals have always suffered. The earth has always suffered because of man. Because there was no curse upon the earth until Adam ate that fruit. And Paul tells us that the animals, they cry out. They want God to come and remove that curse. All but that snake. When we read a millennium, the Bible says that a child will have a lion and, and a bear and a, and a leper all on one leash walking them through the park. That's not, that's not happening today. Matter of fact, the animals today are getting rapid. They're getting, uh, they hear more animal attacks on mankind. But God says, as far as right now, let's stop right here in chapter 6. Let's say your Bible ended with Genesis 6-7. What is the attack upon? The entire population, anything that is living or breathing on this earth, you're done. That's it. Close the Bible. We're done. That's what God thinks of this earth. But we have John 3-16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We read, but. <coughs> Excuse me. But. Now this is a good but. I don't think we had any buts yet. I haven't been paying attention for our but. 
There are good butts and there are bad butts. This but here is the reason why we are here today. Jesus Christ is a but in my life. That reason why I am living and going to have eternal life. But Jesus Christ suffered and died for me. But Noah found grace. I believe that's the first time that word shows up. And it shows up with a man that is with God in the eyes of the Lord. The entire world population, whatever it is, I don't know. An entire, the whole continent, all the land masses that man has spread out by now. What did it say? It said, uh, let me find one place here real quick. And Manhelia lived after he begat Jared 830 years and begat sons and daughters. That's a, that's a lot of years of begat sons and daughters. And these sons and daughters lived blah, 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 and begat their sons and daughters. And those sons and daughters begat sons and daughters. There's a lot of people on this planet now. Now, as the days of Noah, let's look at what Jesus said. When the rapture happens, going to be airplanes crashing, churches are going to disappear, boom. As the days of Lot, an entire world population, one man found grace in God's eyes. There it is. I don't think the rapture is going to be as many as people think it's going to be. As far as graves, yes, okay. People living and walking, I don't think so. It's going to be very few. Lot, it was the, the prayers of Abraham. Abraham is praying during that time, Lot. The Bible says he was just, and he came out. The Bible says, Jesus said, there'll be two in bed, one shall be taken, the other left. When it comes to what we're looking right now, the judgment of God upon man is the majority, and those that are saved are the minority. They say that the African Americans are the minority. No. The Bible-believing Christian that does what God tells him to do is the minority of the entire world. So with all the population, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Now we see these are the generations of Adam, chapter 5. These are the generations of Noah. We're going to see that these are the generations of Jesus Christ. Out of Noah, who has three boys. Shem is going to be the line of Jesus Christ. Why did we have chapter 5? Adam and, and Seth and Enos and Enoch and Jared. And, that's the line of Jesus Christ. Now we're picking up with the line of Jesus Christ again. It's all about Jesus. Where is Jesus in death in Genesis 5? There's his family. That's his family tree. What is Jesus Christ in Genesis 6? Noah. The generations of Noah. Had God not spared Noah, Jesus would never, no one ever would have been born. So you'll find Noah in the line of Jesus Christ. Noah was a just man. That's what the Bible says about Lot. In a work, wicked, perverted world that Lot was in, he was just. In a wicked, perverted world that Noah is in, He's just one man. One man came out of the flood. One man came out of the fire. And then after that, man is just and perfect. Now that doesn't mean he's absolutely sinless. He's not sinless. But perfect in the Bible in this case means you're striving to do what God wants you to do, and you fail. You, For the Old Testament, you bring that offering that God told you to do. For the Christian, is you bring your sins to Jesus Christ, and you are sorry, truly sorry, that you have failed God. You are doing all that is expected of you by God. That's perfect. In his generations, 
of all his generations, he's the just and perfect one. And Noah walked with God. We saw that way back over here with Enoch. And when Enoch walked with God in his time, God says, okay, come with me. Well, wait a minute. What's going on? Come. Well, God, what am I? Enoch's in heaven right now. He's like, well, what am I doing here? I, my whole family died. What about me? No, not you. Now, Noah walked with God. And God's going to say, get in that ark. And you're going to come out of that judgment. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons. Shem, there's Jesus. Ham, and Japheth. And the earth also was corrupt before, the, before God. It, the earth, the planet. It's corroded. It, it's cursed. It's... I don't know what's going on. Everything is messed up. Humans, the animals, the ground, the planet itself. It's corrupt. It's vile. It's wicked. And the earth was filled with violence. And you say, oh, you know, things today are going on. They're just, everything's just so rampant. And so were they back in Genesis chapter 6. So when the earth is filled with violence, and God says, that's it. Noah, get in the ark. And things are getting violent in the earth today. You get ready to go with God. We are in the days that are going on in Genesis 6. Now, the problem, now don't say I'm going to say the rapture is happening tomorrow. I don't know how vile it did get in Genesis chapter 6. That's the question. Now, we are in a violent world today. Violence with guns, violence with knives, violence with, with religions, violence with war. How bad is it going to get? I don't know. But we are in the days of Noah. And God looked upon the earth. And behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Now, you know what else this world's got right here in Genesis 6? What does this world have that it doesn't have? It doesn't have the Word of God. There is no Bible amongst these people. As far as we see, the last man that walked with God was Enoch. All these generations of, of, of mankind, the next man you see walk with God is in a whole different chapter, chapter 6. In Genesis chapter 5, 23, uh, 5, 21, Enoch walked with God. We get all the way back down. We go to chapter, uh, I mean, verse 32. The man that we read about in chapter 6, he walked with God. You go all the way back to chapter 5, verse uh, through 4. You got Seth. Seth, men began to call upon the name of God. You got all a bunch of people. Then you got a man that walked with God. You got a whole bunch of people. And then again, you got a man walking with God. And the people are gone. And God said unto Noah. Now, when was the last time we read that God said anything to anybody? Been a while. The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. The violence is man's fault. Not the earth. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Imagine what, what Noah felt that moment. Uh, I'm dead. I'm hopeless. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Now what's gopher wood? I don't know. It may be here as another tree or it may not be here no more. Room shall thou make in the ark. And shall pitch it within and without with pitch. There are no iron or no nails mentioned in this ark. Pitch and wood. Pitch and wood. 
Build it with wood and put pitch so it'll be sealed. It won't leak. Now, let me ask you a question. What did Noah do as an occupation? We don't know. We just know that God said, okay, I want you to build it. As far as we know, like even myself right now, I'm in a job right now, and I'm just overwhelmed with complications of learning my job. Here's a man that we don't even know what he did for a living. I'm going to speculate. I don't think he was a shipbuilder. And he probably look at God and say, you want me to do what? And there's a lot of references between Noah and Jesus. The ark was made of wood and saved him. The cross was made of made of wood and it saved my soul. And the only way that Noah in the world could got saved is you got in the ark. The only way I could get saved is getting Christ. And this is the fashion, the design. Other Bibles have a problem with that word. And not only that, because it's in italics, which means the translators found the best word they could. And they were honest to say, this is not in the originals. But this is how we're going to translate. Every time you see an italics word in the Bible, it's their honesty saying, we, we couldn't find the exact word. They were honest. Modern Bibles don't do that. You can read a modern Bible and not know that they stuck a word in there. So this is the fashion, the pattern, the blueprint, which thou shalt make of it. And a pattern has been given to Moses for the tabernacle. A pattern we read were given to David for the temple to give to his son. Thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. And there's all measurement sizes for the cubits. The breadth of it, 50 cubits. And the height of it, 50 cubits. So we learned something else about Noah when he built that ark. He was obedient to God's plan because had he made it shorter or longer than what God told him, it wouldn't have been accepted. He obeyed the measurements in the word that God gave him. A window shall thou make to the ark. And in a cubic shall thou finish it above. I don't understand what that is. I don't know. Some people say that it was a window all the way around the ark. And many people say that was because, you know, the smells and all that. Could have been. Let fresh air in. It could have. They know better than I do as far as that. And the door of the ark thou shalt set in the side thereof with lower, second, and third story shalt thou make it. Okay, we know the ark is 300 cubits by 50 cubits by 30 cubits. We have no idea how or what those measurements of that door is. And yet Jesus said, straight is the gate that leads into life. And we're going to leave, learn later on that God's going to shut this door. And Jesus said, I'm the door. You realize, uh, I'll give you a way before, because a lot of people do already know. That whatever the size of this door, it could have fit the whole world. Anybody that wanted to go in, that door would have been big enough for you to fit through. It was big enough for elephants. They had no problem going through. And both elephants went in as husband and wife. Through the, and it definitely had plenty of room for man. It could have been so low that the giraffes, I don't think the giraffes would have to duck their necks to get in. So that door allowed man to go through. And it doesn't give any measurements. But man could have gone through. Because we will read about eight men. Four men and four women that will walk through that gate, through that door. Few that go the straight gate will enter in and, and get into eternal life. But broad is the way that leads, and, uh, leads into destruction. The whole world is on a, on a broad path, on a broad way to destruction. And 
and this this lower second third stories there's the first heaven the second heaven and the third heaven isn't that interesting and behold I God even I God do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh where is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die a universal flood that has breath of life as far as I remember fishes and whales do not breathe well whales breathe air they come out of the water fishes fish life crabs they don't breathe Noah did not have to bring two goldfish on that ark. He did not have to bring two fit tuna fish. Everything that was in the water stayed in the waters. We say, well, how can we have these crocodiles that are so old? These alligators are so old because they're marine animals. They stayed. They were able to survive by swimming. And you say, well, about the crocodile. They could have they could have hanged on broken trees, dead bodies. You imagine what this earth was. There was dead trees. There were parts of houses. There was dead carcasses all over the place on this earth. The marine life had all kinds of food to eat. Like Armageddon, the birds will have all kinds of food to eat. That raven didn't come back because he probably found a meal somewhere. You probably had excess of seagulls on bodies and floating things. Where is the breath of life under heaven? So heaven did not get flooded like Genesis 1 1 and 1 2. Genesis 1 1 and 1 2, the entire planet, as far as the earth and the solar system, was flooded. That was by Satan and his rebellion. And God said, let there be light. He gave light to this planet again. Adam replenished the earth. Now God says, okay, I'm not going to destroy the entire solar system this time. I'm just going to destroy that realm called earth. Now the next time that God's going to do a global, universal, worldwide, universal-wide kind of destruction will be, he's going to burn it up with a fervent heat. Then he'll start with the new heavens and new earth and new Jerusalem. But with thee, Noah, will I establish my covenant. This is an agreement that God makes with mankind. And thou shalt come into the ark, come into the ark, and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy son's wife with thee. And another thing we learn. And it would have been probably a question. God never tells him how long it's going to be. Gather up food, gather up the animals and yourselves and get in there. And anybody else who wants to come in, allow them in. Yeah. That as long as they brought in what the animal ate, what they ate, and they're drinking water, that's why as a new kid never ended. Yeah. Some people, like I said, this can be good. I don't think this is anti-scriptural. Some people think that maybe God gave the animals a, a spirit of slumber. Yeah, hibernation. hibernation. It could have been. It could have been a lot easier. I mean, could have been a whole bunch of baby I mean, you got to think of it like this. The, the toilet issue in this ark. I mean, that's why they need the windows. I'm, I'm being serious. But here they are. And it's not, re listen, God has recorded what man has said, even though it's a lie. God records the lies of Satan. God records the lies of man. So he never records that anybody of Noah said, well, Lord, how long are we going to do this? So here's a just man that God says, I'm going to save your family. And, okay, fine. I'll build the ark. Oh, we be keep on asking, oh God, when's the rapture going to happen? When's the rapture going to happen? It's none of our business. 
It will happen when God happens. Let's get about doing what God has told us to do. Noah was told to build that ark. He builds that ark. That's exactly what God tells him to do. Now, can I say something else? From Genesis chapter 6, can I be so bold about Christians out there who, who profess to be true Bible-believing Christians that you're going to go visit an ark that a man made that God never told to make ever? Nowhere anymore does God ever say build an ark except for the next ark that man is told to build is a square box to keep the law. And yet only... only I don't know how far I can go with it. Can men build an ark with the specifications of the Bible? I don't even know which Bible they use, by the way. And they charge you a fee, set it up for all can see. Well, if it is by the Bible speculations, you just ruin Hebrews 11.1. 1. And if God wanted us to see that ark, he would not put it on a mountain where we can't get to it. Because it seems like we know where it is. We have found Noah's Ark. But the Turkish government will not allow us to go up there. What do you think God thinks about us finding the Ark? Let's get our eyes off the Ark of Noah. And let's get on the Ark with Jesus Christ. So, they're not told. And if every living thing of flesh, all flesh, two of every sort, Shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee? Oh, I love how the Bible tax the modern person today. They shall be male and female. That's interesting. We've got this ark in America, and we've got a bunch of people who do not know what they're male or female. Instead of investing that money to build that thing, we should invest money to say, this is a male and this is a female. And this is not the only time we're going to see, as far as this event, male and female. It's going to be repeated over and over and over. Now, why would God have to tell Noah to bring a male and female? I'm going to speculate here and you can throw it in the garbage can. Okay? Maybe the times of Noah, maybe people also thought they didn't know what sex they were. Would that be something to think about? No, I want you to bring a male and female. Well, Lord, I know that. I know you need a male and female. Those people outside the ark, they don't know that. Yeah, that sounds right. Male and female. Of fowls, that's the birds, after their kind, their family. So you would bring a family of the fowls. You would not get every species of fowl. And animals are classified into families. I believe dogs and cats, they are, I think they come from seven specific family groups. And from those, from those groups, you, you, you combine the kind and you get what you get today. You end up with a mutt. You get a pre, uh, pure breed. That's a pure breed that, that's running of a family of a dog that has papers. A mutt goes on his papers. And of cattle, after their kind. I know there's all different kind of cows. Jersey cows and, and dairy cows. But you run that, and I'll tell you, the Waikiki Encyclopedia is very great on this one. Because when you look up like a, a cow, on the, on the right hand side it gives you the classification of that animal you look up. And it will tell you class and family. I forget which one of its class of you, and that would run you back to what animals came on that ark. And then, when they came out of the ark, you just crossbreed the, the, that family, and you got what you got today. Scientists are crossbreeding. Of every creepy thing on the earth, after his kind. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't know why a creepy thing. Snakes and all, why, why do he allow snakes? Yeah. But, he said, two of every sort, family, shall come unto thee to keep them alive. If those animals, those two animals did not get in that ark, they died. 
and take thou unto thee all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be food for thee and for them. So you're going to have to feed some of these animals, and you're going to have to feed yourself. And yet God never tells them how much to supply. He just they're building the ark. They are they are filling that ark with food. And when they came to the day that that he had enough supplies, and all the animals had come on, and there was given time for man to get in, God said, "Okay, get in that ark. You're done." As we go about our life. Whether we die or rapture, when we have fulfilled our full purpose for God. Okay? You're coming home. Death or rapture. So what we need to do is when we wake up every morning, we got to thank God because we are alive for a reason. The psalm says, you know, God enjoys and loves the death of his saints. Paul says, hey, I'd rather be in heaven right now, but for the very reason that I am here, it's for your gratification, for your edification. So Noah just kept working, kept working, and kept working to the day that God said, okay, get in that ark. You're done. The work is done. Well, how much more, Lord? This wasn't said. Keep doing. Keep on that ark. Christian. Well, Lord, I'm tired. Keep on with the gospel. Keep preaching that gospel. Keep getting it out. But Lord, keep getting it out. And when you passed out that last gospel track, when you witnessed to that last person that God said, that's it. That when your work is done, you come home. You say, well, why did this man who was right in the Lord, try to do right Lord, why did he die at a young age? Because he finished his work. And take thou unto thee all the food that is eaten. It would be all vegetarian food. And thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be food for thee and for them, the animals. And we don't know, and Noah doesn't know what the earth is going to look like when he comes out. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him. And look at the last statement we see about in this chapter. So did he. Do you know what amen means? Amen means so be it. Noah almost did a so be it. Noah almost did an amen. But so did he. The Holy Spirit said, Noah, as far as what God told you to do, so did. I am don't mean to change my mind. Speaking to Noah, so did you. You did it. You did everything that I told you to do. Isn't that remarkable? Well, I wish that would be spoken, and it won't be, at the judgment seat of Christ when I stand before Jesus Christ. I hope so did he. But I'm not going to get that. I'm going to get something like, I can't remember what it was. I was just thinking, thinking of uh, Thou faithful man, enter in. Thou hast been faithful. So, so, in a few things. Faithful in a few things. That's me. That's the Christian. Faithful in a few things. This man, no law. And he did what God told him to do. That's remarkable. Maybe we do like that, but we don't. We all don't. We're still sinners. Saved by grace. 